Um, I will start the closing with um, an advice for the next organizer. So if you have instructions to give in restaurant, in rooms, whatever, use a megaphone, microphone, whatever, otherwise you end up like me. <laughs> It's been a lot of fun for us, and uh, we are now closing this uh, version of um, Eurobasicon in Paris. I was very happy to do to organize that with Antoine. And um, so, you were actually uh, more than 300 coming here. You want to have the exact numbers in uh, in the uh, Eurobasicon Foundation talk in the end. Uh, um, those numbers will be lower than the exact number because a lot of people showed up directly without registering. So basically we are closer to uh, 340 than to 300, which makes us the biggest, busy event ever I've been known about. which of course proves that BSD is dying. <laughs> anyway, uh, such an event couldn't be possible without the sponsors, so I want again to thank all of them because, yes, Paris is expensive. So the partners, uh, the Furies, PC Engine, Netscomune, Zio, uh, NetBSD, um, Mozilla, who hosted the Dev FreeBSD Dev Summit, Arola, who hosted the NetBSD Dev Summit. Please thanks all of them. If you see them around, say thanks to them. Uh, our both sponsor, uh, PPro. Scale Engine, HAProxy, NetGet, GConf, who were very professional streaming all those events, D2SI. <laughs> Google, uh, FreeBSD Foundation, Gandhi, uh, StormShield, XT Infinity, uh, Modium, thank you to them as well. Trivago, Intel, please thanks. <laughs> and a very huge thanks to Vente Privé, who was a platinum sponsor this year. Uh, and of course, we want to uh, say a big thank you to the uh, organization committee of the conference. So, thank you. And thank you again to uh, Rodrigo Osorio, uh, who gave us a huge amount of help uh, preparing and handling the conference these, uh, these few days. Thank you, Rodrigo. <laughs> thank you to the uh, program committee, obviously, who came with a very nice lineup, I think. Surprisingly, when the head of the program committee is an OpenBSD developer, we have more OpenBSD talks than in other conferences. <laughs> and thank you, of course, to anyone else that was involved helping us or involved in some way in this, uh, in this conference. Thank you very much. I also hope you like the, uh, the small cartoons. Uh, so thank you, Tangi Rao, for the, uh, for the small sketches and drawings. <laughs> and I think someone wanted to uh, thank someone else. Michael Lucas, I think you wanted to say a few words. <laughs> Don't rush, we have time. <laughs> Hi, I, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, last night on the Metro, I had a unique Parisian experience in that my wallet was lifted. And 
I, I'm mobbed on the phone trying to get credit cards shut down and I received more offers of help from random people, some of whom I knew, some of whom I didn't. Uh, and if you're in trouble, this is a great group of people to be surrounded by. So uh, I just wanted to say thanks to every one of you. And, and really, having gone to a lot of conferences, if, if the worst person we have is Henning, <laughs> we're, we're really doing pretty well. So thank you all. So, I think that you all know Graf the Goat now. Uh, Graf the Goat deserves to not be, um, how to say that probably, uh, he deserves a new keeper to keep his sanity. So, uh, Benedict? Oh, Alan? Uh, so, yes, after many, many adventures with uh, Michael Lucas, Groff is now on his way to Taiwan for BSDTW, uh, and uh, Marius Zaborski has agreed to, to be the keeper. So, Marius, you want to come get Groff here and take good care? Uh, he comes with not only a beret and a backpack full of uh, all the conference badges from previously, and a dog tag in case he gets lost, but there's also a... Uh, a British cravat <laughs> from his trip to BSD Can and uh, various other interesting things. Uh, badges from Wright, from uh, Peter Hessler, and a handy little carrying bag because he's got too much stuff now. <laughs> Drop has luggage. I didn't suppose that Grove will have more clothes than I do. And I don't believe I will have the same connection that Michael Lucas had, but I will uh, try my best. So beside your BSDCon, many BSD conferences are coming, so let's spread a little bit of word about them. Lee Wen, want to talk about uh, BSD Taiwan? <laughs> right, so uh, everything I want to say is on our page, uh, bsdtw.org. So uh, I hope uh, you can uh, memorize it. So uh, I have only two things I want to mention. First is uh, on the right top corner, there is a register now, but you cannot register now. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to open registration on uh, October 1st, which is next week. And uh, another thing is, uh, please click on the sponsors. Can you? Oh. Sure. Sponsors. I should not go. Yeah, yeah. And uh, scroll down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, there is the dragonfly, but uh, yeah. <laughs> We are still looking for sponsors, and the US sponsorship will make this conference success. Thanks. <laughs> Oops. Uh, so. Another event that is coming is FOSDEM, where we usually have a BSD dev room. Uh, FOSDEM is a very important event, so it's really good if the BSD uh, can be well represented outside of the BSD world. And uh, Rodrigo will uh, spread a little bit of word about it. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'll give you a 
to show to you about what's false then dev room because I saw on Twitter some people ask what exactly the false then dev room and what we're doing on it. So, uh, okay. I have no idea how your stuff okay. works. Um, Okay. Okay. Don't care. Uh, so uh, the Fosdem Dev Room is uh, a room we have uh, for uh, a full day. Is uh, uh, allocated. Uh, we have dev rooms for every big project. So uh, and uh, BSD has a, a room for a full day. Usually, sometimes we have just a half day because we are missing a project for talks. So everyone is uh, is allowed to apply after the CFP comes uh, for the dev room. And um, so if you have a wanna, have, wanna have a talk, discuss about something, have a question answer session or whatever, please apply and we will see if it's uh, possible to put in the schedule. And uh, I think it's in February uh, three and four and uh, the call for participation will come in the few uh, in the few weeks, I think, as soon as the dev room will be validated. And uh, aside from the dev room, we have uh, other BSD events around. Uh, the, we have a dev summit for FreeBSD, and also a, a boot on the on the FOSDEM uh, run by the foundation. I think uh, I am right. Okay, okay, so that's it. So thank you very much, and uh, I want to apologize about some troubles with the application. I heard some people uh, report that there's problem with the schedule on time. I'm uh, in Brussels time, sorry. Uh, this is very, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> happens. Time is just misery. Uh, thank you very much. So Dan, you want to talk about to talk to us a bit about BSD Can? Certainly. Hi, I'm Dan. I run BSD Can. Um, it's hard to compete with Paris. <laughs> we 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 do have poutine. <laughs> I, I. I'm going to like this. Oh, in the light, in the light. Uh, they don't want to see me, though. Um, <laughs> so we have poutine. I went over that. I hear we also have shawarma. Someone, there's quite a few people that come to BSD Can and really like the shawarma. Uh, but we have shawarma in Paris. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have beaver tails? Uh, we're not crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We have beaver tails, but yeah. Uh, BSD can, uh, it's two days of tutorials and uh, two days of a free BSD Dev Summit before. Uh, we're also looking to host NetBSD Dev Summit. We've done that once before, and I'm sure we can get enough OpenBSD folks for them to have a crazy time as well. Uh, then we have two days of talks on Friday and Saturday, so come along. It's a good time, and there's a lot to see, not as much as Paris. <laughs> Another usual BSD conference happened in Asia, and Sadasan is going to talk to us about Asia BSDCon. Thank you. So I am Hiroki, the organizer of the Asia BSDCon. The Asia BSDCon is held in Tokyo every year, and uh, it is, uh, I think, a 13th anniversary. And uh, yes, we have actually Viva Tales, finally. <laughs> and, uh, yes, and a good sushi, and uh, yes. Uh, you can imagine the good dishes of the Japanese cuisine. So yeah, this is a, a poster of the AJBC come in there. Yes, we will have a similar format, uh, uh, as same, that's almost the same as uh, BSD can and uh, your BSD can the four days, uh, two days for a uh, tutorial on the meetings and uh, two days of the paper sessions. And uh, we are collecting actually uh, not a talk proposal only, uh, but also a paper so you should 
write your results into the uh, four pages or the five pages or six pages uh, papers. Because uh, most of the Asian uh, uh, country people do not uh, read English, so do not read or do, cannot listen to uh, English speaking uh, talk. So uh, we are trying to teach them. So we are using English. So Asia Bistikan is held in English only, no Japan, Japanese. So please be relaxed if you <laughs> decide to uh, come to Japan. So we are welcoming the uh, Western uh, country, uh, who, uh, people who speak English. So thank you. So in um, all the BAZ group, we all have foundation to support what we are doing. So the first foundation to talk is uh, the Free BSD Foundation. Please, Deb, come to talk about it. Thank you, Baptiste. Um, well, this is probably one of the only times I'm taller than everyone here. So this is awesome. Uh, my name is Deb Goodkin, and I'm the executive director with the FreeBSD Foundation, and I'm really happy to be here. This is the first time I've ever been in France. Uh, I want just, I know we don't have a lot of time, so I just want to tell you a little bit about the FreeBSD Foundation. First, uh, we are very happy and proud to be a silver sponsor of this conference, and uh, this is one of the best ways for people to learn and uh, share knowledge on the BSDs and other technologies, too. But we've been around for uh, 17 years supporting the FreeBSD project. We are a, a US-based 501c3, and that means we're a public non-charity. And um, we're based in uh, Boulder, Colorado, United States. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the key areas that we support. One is software development and operating system improvements, and we have a staff of uh, two full-time software developers on staff, as well as we also keep two interns on staff. We uh, support the release engineering efforts by having a full-time release engineer on our staff. We support events like this, and um, as well as uh, various uh, FreeBSD developer and vendor summits. And we do a lot of advocacy and training and education, and we're, that's one area that we're trying to increase and, um, and we do have a full-time marketing director who's actually now on maternity leave. She just had twins, and so that was exciting, but you'll also notice that maybe we're not promoting things as much while, while she's gone. Uh, we provide legal support for the project, and that's for the core team as well as uh, protecting the, I, the FreeBSD IP. And then we support face-to-face um, you know, -face meetings and conferences and, and summits, and so, that includes not only conferences like this, but also uh, working with commercial users and helping facilitate collaboration with developers on the project. Uh, one thing as far as face-to-face um, -face, um, opportunities, I wanted to mention that we do have the Bay Area Developer or Vendor Summit that's coming up in the San Francisco area, we refer to as the Bay Area and that will be November 2nd and 3rd, and actually in Los Gatos, we're sponsoring this, and, but Netflix is, also, is uh, providing the venue and the food, and so we really appreciate that. Uh, let's see, what else was I gonna say? Um, but anyway, we can't do this without you. We're 100% funded by donations, and so, and that's donations from individuals and organizations. We do have a new partner benefit program, and what that means is that at various levels, then we're providing um, some um, support and opportunities with, with these partners. And so lastly, what I'd like to do is a couple times a year, we do like to recognize people who've contributed to the FreeBSD project. And so I'm gonna call up uh, one of our European board members, who is Bendik Ruschling, who is our vice president of our board of directors and we're going to recognize some of the develop the FreeBSD developers and contributors. So let's see, I will show you. Oh, thank you. Hello, I'm Benedict. You might have seen me on BSD now. Um, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. So we have a bunch of people to recognize and uh, it's always nice, it's like Christmas actually, um, to give people a little recognition for the work that they're doing and um, 
So the first person I want to... Okay. So don't take everything away. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, so it's important to... Um, I mean, we have conferences and we have um, all these nice events, but there's also a lot of people who cannot come to these events. And the only thing that they can get is, um, you know, Twitter feeds and other social media things. But it's really the people um, afterwards <laughs> saying, oh, this is a nice picture of you that you did there, or you had a, a very good shot taken there. But it's all, also a question who took those pictures. And, and so there are a couple of people who sometimes stay in the shadows or walk around during lunchtime and taking pictures. At, uh, at least at um, BSD Can and at Euro BSD Con, maybe there will be some pictures at uh, Asia BSD Con in the same quality in the future year. So um, what I'm getting at is that there's a guy doing this for a number of years now and he's providing a lot of galleries for people to, to see and reminisce the good times we had at conferences. So I would like to honor Olivier Robert. I knew I would get him with this one. <laughs> you want to say a few words? Uh, well, <laughs> it's a real surprise. I, I'm doing, just doing that for fun, and, uh, and I like taking pictures and to take uh, pictures of people in some situations, and, uh, and well, well. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That was the easy part. Um, <laughs> so next persons are a little bit more technical. So um, many of you are using uh, BSD natively on your laptops. And we had, in a couple of years ago, we had a lot of problems getting graphics to work properly. And there was uh, always complaints like, oh, this other OS over, over there in, in the Unix space, uh, they have so much better graphics. And we want to be on par with them at least, or even overtake them somehow. And uh, there was one person who helped us a lot. Uh, we had a very good um, interaction with him two years ago at the um, FreeBSD Dev Summit in Stockholm, Sweden. And he's been busy ever since keeping us updated in the graphics stack and X11 and KMS stuff. So I would like to call up Jean-Sébastien Pedron. If I pronounce that correctly, sorry. See those surprised faces? Do you want to say a few words? You've been also taking pictures here at the conference. I did. Uh, thank you very much. That's a surprise for me. Uh, nice one. And now I feel obliged to continue to, to do that in the future. <laughs> thank you very much. Motivation is everything. OK. Um, <laughs> Yeah, next up, uh, I would like to call up someone else who has been on this stage before um, for doing, um, outside of his uh, normal work on the FreeBSD project, a little bit uh, also in his company that he's doing. Uh, he's currently managing um, his small team uh, at Wheel Systems, and he's doing a lot of work in the Capsicum area. So I would like to call back to the stage Mariusz Staborski. <laughs> if he hasn't run off with the goat yet, so thank you for all your capsicum work that you're doing. And uh, yeah, I hope this is a nice uh, way of saying thank you. You want to say a few words? Um, thank you very much. I'm also very surprised. So I don't know what to say. <laughs> OK, thank you. And last but not least, so um, as we were talking about Capsicum, there's also other applications in the cloud that are using Capsicum, and this person has done a lot of work while, while also um, founding a company around his product. So I would like to call up Ed Scouten with Cloud ABI. <laughs> I love surprises. A few words, maybe? Well, uh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Completely not, not expecting this. Um, well, it can come in handy an extra backpack because we, we have a lot of more stuff that we need to, need to take back to the Netherlands. So, uh, thanks. <laughs> All right. And we would like to thank you to Baptiste and Antoine for organizing this conference and everyone else who helped. So, thank you very much. And uh, I guess we have a couple more foundations. Thank you.
So the NetBSD project uh, is also a foundation to support it, and Alistair is going to talk a bit about it. Thank you. Thanks, Baptiste. Uh, I believe I've only got 22 minutes for this talk, so that's, that's good. <laughs> okay, um, NetBSD and Package Source both fall under the NetBSD Foundation. Uh, I am uh, here to, to tell you about this. Package Source is actually 20 years old this year, um, uh, and I've been a developer for 20 years old with NetBSD. Um, as usual, it runs in 23 platforms, quarterly branches for 13 years. Um, we believe that's a good frequency for this. Uh, as of now, the, 20, the package source repo is frozen uh, in preparation for the 2017 Q3 branch. Um, the branch is expected by the end of the month. Um, we've had PGP signature validation for two years. And um, if some of you caught Corbin's talk on hardening package source, that's an excellent introduction into the ways that we're, we're going forward uh, with some of the security features that we have. Um, Joyent has got some signs uh, release binary packages for Linux, Mac OS X, and Illumos. I think there's uh, over 15,000 packages in each of those. And we've got plans for signing TNF uh, packages um, from the project for i386, AMD64, and for ARM-based things. Um, as you can see, we've got a fancy uh, animation up there. Uh, NetBSD release news. We have the 7.1 release uh, happened in March 11th uh, this year. 8.0 is currently in the process of being released. Uh, we started that on June the 6th, and the current status is it's about to be released real soon now. Okay, for some uh, value of real soon now. Um, thanks very much to Jared McNeil for doing all the, uh, the work to uh, to bring sanity to our ARM ports. Um, and there's a huge number of, um, of uh, evaluation boards, uh, system and chips, and things like that, which you can see in the screen right here. Okay. Um, <laughs> one of the, the things looking forward as well is that we have now got support for the VAC Station 4000 Turbo Channel USB and GPIO. So that's uh, something that's um, really coming in uh, handy for anybody who's got a, a spare VAC station hanging around. Um, LLVM and Clang are in tree. Uh, version 5 maintained by Jorg. Uh, still optional and off by default, mainly because of the architectures that are supported don't really map to the ones that we have with GCC 5.3 at the moment. Um, one of the interesting points about that is that uh, the LLVM builds and the Clang builds, um, Jorg does them regularly for AMD64 for package source bulk builds, and they're particularly good at finding re uh, compiler regressions in that. Uh, Camille has been doing some excellent work uh, on behalf of the, the TNF uh, on a contract basis, and his talk was, uh, was well received this afternoon. I uh, hope you all caught that. I certainly did. Um, if not, see him around later on. Um, right, there's a new board of directors. Um, I won't tell you the people on there. Uh, you can see for yourself up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Likewise, the core team, we, uh, we have. Uh, I'll go into some, uh, some detail on the GSOC projects. There were three of them this year. One was um, enhancing the log-based file system that we have. Um, uh, Leo uh, also uh, did an excellent job with the package source be debug libs. And finally, we've been porting Anita, uh, which is our uh, continuous integration <coughs> test suite, to EVB ARM, PMAX, HPC MIPS, and Amiga. And Utkarsh did that, and he's now become an FBSD developer because of it. Um, I think that's about uh, all that I, I want to say for the moment, and Baptiste is looking yeah, very, uh, very hard at me, and I think I'm going to get uh, thrown off here soon. Um, 
thanks very much. I apologise that the slides aren't, uh, aren't available for you to see. I'll put them up online later so everybody can see them. Thank you. Thank you, Alistair. And last but not least, the OpenBSD project is also having a foundation that helps its development. Ingo is coming to speak about it. Hello, I'm Ingo Schwarze, currently maintaining the Mandoc toolkit that is used by all the BSDs. The OpenBSD Foundation has exactly one exclusive goal, that is to support development work in BSD licensed code. And that is primarily done by three means, by funding hackathons, by funding infrastructure required for the project such that developers can actually focus on developing software and increasingly importantly, by funding sabbaticals to get larger projects done in a timely manner. Now, um, the OpenBSD Foundation is intentionally not doing any marketing. It is intentionally not owning any intellectual property and it is intentionally not directing the policies of any BSD project, but it is facilitating the writing of code. And um, while most of that code is written initially in the context of the OpenBSD project, much of it um, is concerned with fundamental innovations that sooner or later get reused elsewhere and a few programs are maintained that are incorporated into the other BSDs and even beyond. I'm not just thinking about OpenSSH, but also about LibreSSL, Mandoc, and many other programs. To um, fund all that work, we need donations in the OpenBSD foundations both substantial donations from larger enterprises and also very importantly many small ones from individuals and small businesses. So for that reason, thank you for considering to contributing to the OpenBSD Foundation and of course also thank you to everybody who helped to have such a nice conference once again. Thank you, Ingo. Thank you, thank you Ingo. The EuroBSDCon organization is backed by the EuroBSDCon Foundation and uh, Henning is going to give us uh, some words about it. So you're actually giving the last words of the conference to the worst person here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Can you make that? So, the conference, of course, is not possible without you, the attendants and the audience. So the next two or three minutes are going to be about you. The largest group this year, Kelso Fries, is from France. <laughs> and I'm standing in the way. Now, guess who's second? <laughs> Welche Überraschung? The you lost again, Henning. Uh, sorry. The largest group from a country ever being sent to any conference ever in humankind, of course, the US. <laughs> the Netherlands is second. And since every second counts, the UK is also second. <laughs> Two more countries with more than 10 people here, that's Switzerland and Sweden. All the other countries are less than 10 people, but it's 25 more countries. Can you go to the next? Henning, Twin to the light. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so the total, total number of attendees this year is 312. There might be a couple more that we don't have on the system yet. Yeah, between 10 and 20 more, even a bit more, but I need to count the bags that are left. We were about 320 people on the boat yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
So that is the biggest EuroBSDCon ever. It also is the biggest BSD conference ever, as far as we know. Um, so thank you all for coming and making this possible. In memory of Paul Schenkefeld, who's been the father of our foundation, we have the Paul Schenkefeld Travel Grant. So every year, we, we get one person who is not able, who should be at the conference, but is not able to pay that himself. Um, we get him in, him or her. Now, this year, unfortunately, the winner got his visa denied, so we have nobody here. So, um, but please apply for next year. Spread the word. <coughs> Whoever should be here and cannot afford it should apply for the grant. The board will select the most deserving applicant, probably by July again or June or something like that. Um, just go to, the, go to the website, use the contact form, tell us why you should be here and why you can't afford it, and we hope we have a very good applicant again <coughs> to select next year. Now, of course, the one bit that you all want to know, and these are really going to be the last <laughs> words, where are we going next year? I'll reveal a secret here. It will be Europe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, switch to the next slide. Woohoo! Who recognizes that? <laughs> That's right, Romania. We are, we are going to be in Bucharest. The venue is going to be the University of Bucharest. And we are aiming for the second last weekend, that's September 20th to 23rd. And I hope to see all of you and even a couple more there. I have one last question. If this is your first EuroBSDCon, please raise your hand. That's more than 20%. We are sustainable. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thanks again to the awesome organization by the local team, especially Bob and Antoine. And I hope to see most of you and much more in Bucharest next year. I have a special thanks to give is uh, to you all for attending, for being so um, disciplinated when going to the dinners when we left the room we had we were very happy not to have to babysit anyone so i thank this community because it's a wonderful one thank you thank you all.